Assalamualaikum and greeting everyone. Uh, today we are going to continue our previous lesson which is about the cell structure and functions. Okay, uh, but before that we need to take a look at our OP for today. Our objective for today is 2.1 struktur dan fungsi sel. Kalau kamu lihat di sini, alright. Uh, kalau kita bersemuka kita akan belajar tentang uh, 2.1.1. Kami akan dapat menyediakan slide sel haiwan dan sel tumbuhan. Okay. Kemudian point 2 mengenal pasti struktur sel haiwan dan sel tumbuhan berdasarkan pemerhatian menerusi mikroskop cahaya. Tapi kamu di rumah kamu boleh tengok gambar nanti dekat dalam buku teks digital. Kemudian uh, 2.1.3 menganalisis komponen dalam sel haiwan dan sel tumbuhan seperti yang dilihat pada mikrograf dan kita akan dapat menyatakan fungsi utama komponen dalam sel haiwan dan sel tumbuhan seperti yang dilihat pada mikrograf dan akhir sekali kita akan dapat membandingkan dan membezakan komponen antara sel haiwan dengan sel tumbuhan so let's go back to our digital textbook so 2.1 you may still recall the shape of cells you learn in form 1 okay much like the beehive which is made up of hexagonal shaped units all living things are also made up of cells that are combined together all right cells are the basic units of the living things that is the first definitions that you need to know to learn about the cell cells is the basic unit of living things uh, if you take a look at the house the structure of the house what is the basic unit of the house the bricks okay batu bata this is the experiment that we need to do actually but then you you can read by your own actually i have a picture of this with uh, my students before uh, let's see if i can find it and show it to you but we need to move on so this is the experiment uh, after plant cells we are going to preparing and examining slides of animal cells using our cheek cell okay but then we unable to do the experiments so you can watch the videos on uh, youtube for that right there's a lot actually uh, people students teachers doing that experiment so now let's take a look at our next op or next objective so the components of animals and plant cells and their functions so first we are going to take a look at the animal cells as you can see in figure 2.1 okay animal cells uh, we have uh, this structure okay later on i ask you to do something at the end of this uh, video but for now let's learn together okay so cells is actually is like a factory uh, if you take a look at the factory organizations uh, the boss okay we have boss the bosses will tell everyone what needs to do okay same goes to the cells so as you can see right now uh, there are several structure uh, we call them organelles what is organelles organelle is the little organ uh, for the cell so in this figure we can see the nucleus okay the nucleus which is the boss of the cells and we have also the nucleus inside it all right and then we have uh, lysosomes, we have cytoplasm, mitochondrion, centriole, Golgi apparatus, and then ribosome, plasma membrane, smooth endoplasmic articulum, rough endoplasmic articulum. Okay, this is for the animal cells. And after that, we are going to take a look at uh, what is the function of each organelle. So, first, we're going to learn about the mitochondrions. Uh, the plural is mitochondria. Okay, so what is mitochondria actually? If you see mitochondria, which is uh, available, okay, in animal cells, plant cells also have it actually. Okay, it is a rod shape or spherical, and then to able to memorize its functions, mitochondria is a battery of the cells. Okay, mitochondria is a battery. What is the function of the battery? So. If a toy without battery, it will not functioning. So same goes with the mitochondria. Cells needs mitochondria to functioning. So it consists of two layers of membranes, which are the smooth outer membrane and folded inner membrane. It contains enzymes that play the role in cellular respirations. So 
it's able cells to respire okay and then the function is the sites that generates energy through the glucose oxidation process during cellular respiration tapak untuk menjana ATP okay ATP what is ATP adenosine triphosphate okay adenosine triphosphate so energy released in the form of ATP molecules adenosine triphosphate there to be used by the cells so without mitochondria cells are unable to functioning okay so cells need mitochondria for example which part of the cells needs mitochondria the most okay i can tell you this skeletal muscles your arms your leg for example if you are an athlete you probably have a lot of mitochondria right now at your skeletal cells for example your legs all right so same goes with your arms okay because you swing it a lot you use it a lot if you're an athlete okay different from other normal person which regularly exercise or not exercise at all okay let's next take a look at the centriole what is the functioning of the centriole and what is it actually so the structure of the centriole is small cylindrical components that exist in pairs in animal cells made up of complex arrangements of microtubules does not exist in plant cell so centriole is functioning in forms spindle fiber during cell divisions in animal cells in biology we will learn about mitosis and then this organelles plays important role in animal cells to form spindle fiber which will attach to the chromosome and then pull it to the opposite pole okay so this is the most important function during cell divisions mitosis in animal cells centriole play very important function in mitosis which is some types of cell divisions because without it the chromosome will not uh, pull to the opposite pole and you may have defected cell right there which can call a lot of problems so uh, let's take a look at the Golgi apparatus as you can see the shape of the Golgi apparatus right there is like a Wi-Fi symbol all right okay Wi-Fi symbol to memorize it you need to remember Wi-Fi so what is the functions and how the structures of the Golgi apparatus it consists of stack of parallel flattened stacks that are coated by a single cell membrane new membrane is added at one end of the Golgi apparatus and vesicles bud off from the other end so that is the function uh, that is so that is the structure of the Golgi apparatus and its functioning in process modifies packs and transport chemicals such as protein carbohydrate and glycoprotein in combinations of carbohydrate and protein remember Golgi apparatus as packaging in post office for example uh, post laju uh, kamu ingat dia seperti seorang uh, tukang bungkus makanan uh, boleh juga okay, di dewan makan uh, dia bungkus dalam kes ini ini adalah tempat untuk memproses dan mengubah suai protein okay and modifies packs and transport chemicals such as protein so remember pembungkusan remember packaging remember golgi apparatus now let's take a look at the plasma membranes so this is the outer layer of the cells actually of the animal cells which is surrounds the entire content of the cell made of proteins and phospholipids thin and elastic film and partially permeable what mean by partially permeable it is a selective membrane it will allow certain things to go in and outside of the cells it will not allow all the things to go in or outside of the cell it only selects certain things only okay so it's functioning in separate content of cell from the external environment and controls the movement of substance into and out of the cell like i said before and then allow exchange of nutrients respiratory gases and waste materials between cells and their surroundings so plasma membrane you can remember it's like a gate okay what is the function of the gate of the factory okay what is situated in front or near the gate of course we will have the guard 
kita ada pacik guard apa fungsi pacik guard dia akan membenarkan individu-individu boleh masuk atau keluar ataupun barang boleh masuk atau keluar bergantung dengan pacik guard so this is how we remember plasma membrane it will select things that can go in and outside go outside the cell alright so this is the structure of the plasma membrane okay and inside you can find cytoplasm and the outer membrane of the cell all right let's take a look at the next page the next page we have lysosomes to remember lysosomes you remember cleaner this organelle clean anything that is not functioning it will destroy the organelles that is not functioning so small spherical sacs enclosed in a single membrane contains hydrolytic enzymes so this enzyme is very powerful as it digests uh, unfunctioning organelle for example so the function is hydrolyzed complex organic molecules such as protein nucleic acid and lipid and breaks down bacteria and components of damaged cells like i said before if we have a damaged cells this lysosome will help us to get rid of that damaged cells so it's very usable and you can remember lysosome as a cleaner it will clean okay the garbage inside our house for example inside our school so remember cleaner remember lysosome and then nucleus All right so this is the bosses of the cells uh, plant cells and animal cells help nucleus so the largest component in the cells spherical compressed and enclosed in a nuclear membrane with many pores the nucleus contains chromosomes nucleolus and nucleoplasm and it's functioning in control all the cells activities like i said before it acts like a boss okay do that do this okay that is the function of the nucleus and every other organelles inside the cell will uh, meet the requirement of the nucleus will do anything that nucleus asks them to do so like a boss has chromosomes that contain the oxyribonucleic acid dna DNA determine the cell characteristic and metabolic functions. All right, so we have a nuclear membrane right there, and we have nucleoplasm. Okay, we have nucleolus and chromatin. All of this inside nucleus. All right. So now let's take a look at the ribosome. Ribosome is the worker right here. Same goes with the Golgi apparatus just now. Okay, like ribosome is like a dot. Okay. Small, compact, and spherical granules consist of protein and ribonucleic acid, right, RNA. Ribosomes are present on the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum or exist freely in the cytoplasm. So, what is the function of the ribosome? The function of the ribosome is the site for protein synthesis. Okay? So, the protein synthesized in ribosome. Okay? Without ribosomes, the protein that we eat, that we consume through our food, will not be synthesized and it will go through our feces. Alright? Ribosome is play a critical role in our cells. Have a lot of impact in our growth in terms of using the proteins molecules that we consume through food. Okay? So now let's take a look at the endoplasmic reticulum so we have two types of endoplasmic reticulum one is smooth and the other one is rough okay consists of system and interconnected folded flattened sacs okay endoplasmic reticulum membrane is continuous with the nuclear membrane there are two types of endoplasmic reticulums like i said before rough and smooth so what is the difference rough it has ribosomes attached to the surface but smooth it does not have ribosomes that is the difference so what is the functioning of the ribosome just now synthesis protein so rough have ribosome and smooth does not have ribosome so functions the transport system within the cell okay it's like a graph actually okay it acts like a graph so endoplasmic reticulum acts like a graph graph food food panda whatever you want to call it okay runner 
okay it is a transport system within the cells okay provides a wide surface for enzyme attachment and biochemical reactions the rough endoplasmic reticulum transport proteins synthesized by ribosome so proteins that have been synthesized by the ribosome will be transport to the other part of the cells by using rough endoplasmic reticulum whereas the smooth endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes and transport glycerol and lipids and carries out detoxifications of drugs and metabolic byproducts so if you have toxic inside your body enter your body systems uh, this smooth endoplasmic reticulum will play important role to overcome that toxic effect so, so enough with the animal cells now let us take a look at the plant cell okay in figure 2.2 you can see the structure of the plant cell right there okay as you can see immediately the shape is different okay the shape of the animal cell is round the shape of the plant cells is like a rectangle it has a fixed shape so difference from the animal cell, which does not have fixed shape organelles inside the plant cell is as you can see through in figure 2.2 okay we have plasma membranes we have another organelles which is different from the uh, animal cell cell wall right there we have also Golgi apparatus we have endoplasmic reticulum nucleus nucleolus nuclear membrane we have vacuole cell we cannot find vacuole or we can find only small amounts of vacuole inside animal cells but in plant cell we have large vacuole and we we see right there we have chloroplast we have cytoplasm as well and same goes to the animal cell we have mitochondrion so that is about the organelle inside the plant cells now let's take a look at the details so vacuole liquid field sacs which is the cell sac a vacuole is surrounded by the tonoplast membrane young plant cells have many small vacuoles which mature plant cells have a large vacuole so the vacuole in animal cells are, is small cell sap contains water organic acid sugars amino acid enzyme mineral salts oxygens carbon dioxide and metabolic byproducts so if you want to remember vacuole remember this storage tempat simpanan water is absorbed into the vacuole plant cells and the cell become turgid in unicellular animals the vacuole contracts during osmoregulations osmosis and excretions so as you can see there's a picture right there we have vacuole and we have tonoplast so vacuoles if the water enter the vacuoles it will make the vacuole expand and the result is the cell expand as well for example during the drought season the plant cell obtain less amount of water causing the vacuole to shrink the result is the plants also will tumbuhan layu pada musim kemarau okay semasa musim kemarau air berkurang menyebabkan vakuol kehilangan dia punya bentuk kerana tiada air di dalam okay dan menyebabkan sel tidak menjadi segar seluruh struktur tumbuh-tumbuhan itu layu okay uh, ini berlaku kepada tumbuhan herba terutamanya alright in unicellular animals the vacuole contracts using osmoregulations unicellular organisms as you can see is very tiny yet very simple organism which uh, only have one cell in unicellular animals the vacuole plays important role for its survival as the cells of the organisms that only have one cell exposed to water the water will enter the cell Okay, the water will enter the cell and will enter this vacuole. The vacuole will expand. Okay, the vacuole will expand and then touch the plasma membrane of the cells, which will release its contents to the surrounding. So the vacuole will expand when the water enters uh, and release the contents, which is the water, to the surrounding after it touching the plasma membrane. This 
causes the vacuole to expand and flash it, expand and flash it, and this will able the cells of the organism survive. If not, the cells will explode. Okay. Now let's take a look at the chloroplast. We only found chloroplast in plant cells, not in animal cells, not in us. Okay, so oval shape consists of two layers of membrane, contain chlorophyll pigments in the grana and give plants a green color. Okay, because chlorophyll that trap the light energy, okay, these chlorophyll is a green pigment and make the leaf looks green. Okay, and then the function of the chlorophyll is absorb sunlight and converts it to chemical energy during photosynthesis. All right, so chloroplasts have chlorophylls and chlorophyll trap sunlight, and sunlight is very important for photosynthesis process, uh, by which the plants make their own food, glucose and oxygen. Okay, and using the carbon dioxide that we respire. Okay, so now we move to the cytoplasm. Same goes to the uh, animal cells just now, which is a jelly-like medium that contains components of the suspended cells, contains organic compounds such as protein, lipid, and carbohydrate, and inorganic compounds such as potassium ion. So. If you want to remember the cytoplasm, it act like a base of the house, okay? And then the function is acts as medium for biochemical reactions in the cells, all right? And then the cell walls. This is the same as the plasma membranes, but the cell wall it allows everything to enter in this case, not like partial permeable plasma membrane which allows certain things to go in and inside of the cells. Cell wall is a strong and rigid outer layer made from cellulose fiber, fully permeable. Okay, different from the plasma membrane, cell wall is fully permeable. And that is functioning in maintains the shape of the plant cells, the fixed shapes of the plant cells and provides mechanical support to the plant cells. Okay, so we have right here the picture of the cell wall. So now we are going to compare and contrast the component of the animal cells and plant cells. So what, what is the difference between our cells and the plant cells? So you have learned about the components in animals and plant cells. What have you learned so far? All right, uh, later on we will do some conclusions. So now let's take a look at the photograph 2.1 structure of the plant and animal cells through a light microscope okay uh, using the light microscope not the electron microscope if you using the electron microscope you will be able to look at the organelle that we have discussed right now okay so now you look at the nuclear cytoplasm plasma membrane in the plant cell, we have cell wall, nucleus, cytoplasm, plasma membrane, and vacuole. That is the only thing that we able that we able to see using the light microscope. And then we have uh, similarities. Both cells are made of nucleus, cytoplasm, plasma membrane, Golgi apparatus, mitochondrion, endoplasmic reticulum, and ribosomes. It's the difference between plant cells and animal cells. Now, plant cell have fixed shape. Okay, animal cells does not have fixed shape. Okay, so plant cell have cell wall, animal cell doesn't. Has chloroplast, animal cell doesn't. Has a large vacuole, animal cell have no vacuole. If present, it is very small. Okay, not big like the plant cell. And then, uh, plant cell store carbohydrate in the form of starch, kanji. Yeah? Okay, and then. The animal cells store carbohydrate in the form of glycogen. Plant cells have centriole, whereas animal cells doesn't have centrioles. That is the difference and similarities between plant cells and the animal cells. We can conclude cells is like a factory. Okay, factory have the boss. Who is the boss in factory? Who is the boss in the cells? Cells have nucleus. 
the factory have the worker who is the worker inside the cell the worker supposed to be golgi apparatus packaging okay pembungkusan the worker also lysosome cleaner okay lysosome which will digest anything that is unfunctioning inside the cell using its enzyme lysozyme okay endoplasmic reticulum rough and smooth uh, detoxification for the smooth and transport for, for the rough endoplasmic reticulum transport of the protein that synthesized by the ribosome uh, we also have ribosome okay synthesizing protein and we have a uh, centriol that is very helpful in uh, mitosis meiosis cell division all right that we will learn throughout this uh, subject and then we also have several other components for example uh, plasma membrane which acts like a guard uh, pengawal ya mengawal atur benda keluar masuk daripada cell we have uh, dinding cell we have cell walls okay for plant cell which uh, make the structure in fixed shape strong so now uh, let's talk about your assignments your assignment for today's lesson is i want you to do 3d models of the animals and the plant cells using plasticines that you can buy from the stationary shops near you okay so what i want you to do is that you make the models with the plasticine and you label it with anything that you have okay, in your house okay the only thing that i want you to buy is plasticine if you unable to find plasticines and you unable to go outside during this mco period you can use any things that you find suitable so that's only for today's lessons hopefully you guys understand if you not understand you can jot down the comments and text me in personal or in our whatsapp group so that's all for today assalamualaikum and greetings everyone